Hello and welcome back to this video series where we're looking at building an e-commerce platform in 25 days using Next, Netlify and Stripe. In this video, we are going to look at actually hosting our application. Uh, so we're going to use Netlify, which is an awesome hosting platform. Uh, you can host static websites, like just index.html files. You can host uh, Next apps, Gatsby apps, React apps. Uh, it is an awesome place uh, to host your applications for free. Um, and yeah, they have a very generous free tier. And so you can build quite a significant application uh, before you even need to think about paying them any money, uh, which we are very thankful for. Thank you, Netlify. You are awesome. All right. So the first thing we need to do is create a new repository for um, our, our project or a new GitHub repository. Uh, so we do that by going to GitHub and then you can click this little plus and click new repository. And then we're gonna give it a name. Uh, I'm just gonna call my next app because that's what I called my uh, project. If you named that something different a couple of videos ago, feel free to call it that. Uh, and then we are going to add a description just saying my super awesome, whoa, awesome, ah, did it again. Awesome, next app. Uh, and we're gonna, I'm gonna keep this public. I mean, you can you can do private if you would like. Uh, I think it's a really good idea to keep everything public unless you need to make it private. Um, show off all the cool stuff that you're building uh, and the new things that you're learning. Uh, I'm gonna leave all these unticked and click create repository. Cool, and that's going to give me a URL that I can copy. And then I'm gonna head over to my terminal. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, well, make sure that I'm in that actual next app folder. So if I do ls, I see node modules and a whole bunch of other stuff. I then want to say git remote dash v. So this is going to list any remotes that we have, um, but you should get fatal, not a git repository. If you get uh, like my Dijon musters address, uh, you're probably in the project repository, our, our course repository. Um, I recommend just copying the next app folder back out into your code directory um, and then changing into that and continuing on with this video. Um, but yeah, we should see that this is not yet a Git repository. So let's make it a Git repository by typing Git in it. And that was super easy. Uh, then if we do Git status, we should see all these folders um, that we have not yet committed to um, our Git project, or we haven't pushed up to GitHub or anything like that. Um, cool. So first off, there are a couple of um, additional folders that we probably don't want uh, to push up to GitHub. Like if we open this up in VS Code, and if we have a look in this .next folder, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, and all of that has been generated for us when we run those next commands. Um, and so we don't we don't really need to keep a track of that in GitHub because we can easily generate that content again. Um, and then if we have a look in Node Modules, you'll see a frighteningly large amount of, uh, of, of Node Modules that we need just to make our small application work. Uh, so we probably don't want to push those up to GitHub either because, again, we can, we can regenerate those just by running npm install. Um, the only things we really care about are this pages directory, our package lock.json, and our package.json file. Um, so what we're going to do is in this root directory, we're going to create a .git ignore file. And this is a place where we can list the things that we want to ignore. So we can say we want to ignore .next, and we want to ignore the node modules folder. And if I save that and then go back to terminal and type git, git status, and before I hit enter, you'll see last time we had uh, next and node modules in there. Uh, but this time we've got this git ignore, uh, but we don't have those two uh, things that we want to ignore, which is awesome. So now what we want to do is say git add full stop. And what that's going to do is stage our changes um, so that they're part of a commit. And then we want to commit, which is just like creating uh, like a save game or a point in time uh, that you want to remember all of the changes up until that point. Um, so we want to remember that we created all of these files. And so we say, this was when uh, we create um, Next.js app. So the next thing we want to do is actually push the, that new commit up to GitHub. So in order to do that, we need to add GitHub as a remote. So we say git remote add origin. And so this is the name of our remote. And then we're going to uh, paste in this uh, URL here. And now if we type git remote dash V, we should see these two. So we should see that we have an origin for fetch and we have an origin for push. 
and they should be set to github.com and then your username and then nextapp.git or whatever you named your project. So the last thing we need to do is push git push up to origin our master branch. So we're saying we want to push up any commits that we've made to the remote origin, which we just added, uh, and the branch that we want to push up is master. So that's the branch that we're currently on. And that'll ask you to authenticate. So now if we do git status, we should see on master branch, uh, nothing to commit working tree clean. And if we do git space log, uh, we should see that last commit that we just did then. Um, and then you can press Q to get out of that. So let's head back over to GitHub and make sure that those changes have been pushed up. If we refresh, we should see our pages directory, our git ignore, our package.json. Okay, so now that we've pushed that up to GitHub, there's just one small change that we need to make uh, to actually be able to deploy this on Netlify. So let's head back to VS Code uh, and in our package.json, we're just gonna add an additional script. So this is going to be an export script um, and that is just going to call next export. Oop export and we'll save that. So now since we've made some changes locally, they don't exist in GitHub. So again, we need to add these changes. We need to then commit these changes. Um, and dash M just means we're adding a message. So our message is going to be uh, add export script. And then we can git push origin master. And then if we head back to GitHub and refresh, um, we should see the latest commit is add export script. So that should be all good. So now we're gonna head over to Netlify um, and we're going to create an account. So if you open up this uh, menu and click sign up, um, I recommend that you sign up with GitHub just because we've already got an account for that um, that we created in the previous videos, uh, but you can sign up with an email and password if you'd prefer. So when you click uh, GitHub, it will ask you to authenticate again um, and give Netlify permission to uh, log in on your behalf. And then when you see this dashboard screen, we just wanna click sites and then new site from Git. And if we scroll down, we can click GitHub and then we need to tell it uh, which actual repository we want to deploy. So I'm going to type in next dash app and then select that from the list. So this is where we can add some deploy settings for Netlify. Um, all of this top stuff is correct, but then under build basic settings, we need to give it um, our build command. So our build command is npm run build. That's going to create um, a new version of our next app, but then we also need to run npm run export, which is that script that we added. Um, and then the publish directory is going to be out. So that's going to automatically create a new version of our application in an out folder. Um, and then that is what uh, will be deployed to Netlify. So let's deploy our site. So you'll see site deploy in progress. So this is creating a new version of our next app um, and deploying it to Netlify. Okay, so once that has finished deploying, we'll get our own little unique URL here. So I've, I've got gifted Corey 4292F8, obviously, uh, .let .netlify .app. Uh, so if I click that, uh, it will open up our application, which is now live on the internet. Um, so we can give this URL to anyone and they can go and visit it. Uh, and you'll see we've got our homepage and our about page. Um, our dynamic route isn't working at the moment. Um, we need to do a little bit more configuration that we'll look at in a future video. Um, but home and about are working perfectly. So the last thing I wanted to do uh, is create a custom name for our site. So Gifted Corey is pretty cool, uh, but I'm assuming yours isn't nearly that cool. Uh, so if we head back over to the site overview, we can click site settings here uh, and scroll down to site name, and then we can click change site name here. And I'm going to call this, I don't know, Superstore. Uh, and you can call this whatever you want. Uh, and if I click save, <laughs> apparently superstore.netlify.app is available. Um, so you won't be able to set it to that. You're gonna have to come up with your own cool name. Uh, but now you'll see if we head back over to our site overview, I've got HTTPS colon slash slash superstore.netlify.app. Uh, so if I click that, uh, we see our application with our home and about page. 
Awesome. So that's how easy it is to get our application deployed to Netlify. But not only that, if we have a look uh, at the deploys uh, tab of our dashboard, you'll see that deploys from master are published automatically. So anytime we make changes locally, uh, commit them, push them up to GitHub, this is going to pick up on that and it's going to redeploy our website. So let's say we wanted to make a change to our about page and we wanted this to be about something else page. Uh, and then we head over to our terminal, we add those changes, we check that we haven't got anything weird uh, that we're about to commit. We then say git commit update about page, and then we can push our changes to origin master. And then once that has pushed up to GitHub, if we head back to our deploys section uh, and refresh, you'll see that this has picked up that there is a new deploy on master uh, and it started building our page for us. And once that changes to published, we can go back to uh, our super superstore.netlify.app slash about, uh, and then our page has updated to about something else. So that's how easy it is to deploy new versions of our application. Awesome. In the next video, we're going to look at preview deploys. I'll see you there.